Um, obviously, coming off a great win against uh, Louisville, uh, one where we had to really fight, and um, you know, proud of our team for that. Uh, now we've got uh, NC State, who's coming off a great win themselves, beating Duke, and uh, just played unbelievable in the game. Had a bunch of guys make shots. Uh, Torn Dorn made some huge threes late. I thought Beverly and Allard Freeman were good throughout, uh, and then they have they have great sides inside with. Uh, Yurt Seven and Leonard Freeman and Abu, those guys are big and strong enough to rebound and uh, finish around the basket, keep people away. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a great atmosphere in there um, Thursday at 9, and, and uh, you know, it should be a very good game. Looking forward to playing it. Imagine whoever made up the schedule three games in five days, two of them up in the triangle. I'm not going to get a Christmas card from Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard, it's a really hard turnaround. There's no doubt about it. Obviously, uh, got some time here for this game, but. Um, the Miami game on Saturday is a little disappointing at, at that time frame, but you just got to do what you got to do. You have to play teams at different times. Um, you know, that's why we play in some of those tournaments uh, where we play in 24 hours and certainly won't get to practice like we would, but, uh, um, you know, that won't be everything. It'll be about how we play and compete. And first, we got to try to play a, a very talented NC State team Thursday. Coach, NC State's a team that likes to press. How much of a luxury is it to have so many guys that can handle the ball so effectively when you play teams like that? Yeah, it helps. Um, you know, I think a lot of press offenses, players, you know, making plays, to be honest with you. I think, you know, everybody at this level as a coach, you know, you need three outlets, um, you know, teach guys to pass fake and uh, meet passes and a lot of fundamental things. But uh, really it comes down to the players uh, making the right reads. And, you um, you know, and then trying to capitalize when you do. And uh, I thought we did the first time we played them. I thought we broke it, you know, pretty well. Didn't didn't really turn the ball over against the press and handled it and, and scored on the back end some with threes and layups. And uh, that'll be uh, probably a little more challenging on the road, um, you know, in a hostile environment. But we do have a lot of guys that seem to do well dribbling and passing. And uh, hopefully our, our older experience will will help with that again. Uh, in terms of being able to manage crowd and all those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, we know they're going to come get us, and, and uh, you know, hopefully our guys are going to continue to handle it. Coach, you talk about the experience <clears throat> on this basketball team. This is a group that over the last few years that looked together, struggled with consistency, and now they have it. What do you think has been the difference with this group of players finally hitting their stride right now later in their careers? Well, I just think, you know, older guys have been through more things. Um, I think this team fits together well. The pieces fit together very well in terms of, you know, the roles and, and what we're expecting uh, guys to do, what they want to do, um, what guys are good at matches what other guys do. I think that's as important as anything. Um, I, I think there's a hunger there and a leadership there that our guy, older guys have that uh, is important. Uh, you know, really good teams, are, as I've said, are – driven by the team, and so far this team has been driven by the older players, and uh, you know, hopefully that will continue. Coach, you're watching your success at UVU, you and watching these guys grow in your program. And yeah, and absolutely. That's one of the, I mean, might be the best thing about coaching, is watching guys, you know, grow up, get better. You, you see how hard they work, you know, whether it's in practice now, but also in the summer, and in, you know, the weight room, and, and you know, some guys putting on weight, some guys improving their shooting, their ball handling, just getting comfortable. Um, you know, you certainly want success for the guys that you see putting in the time that our guys are. And, uh, you know, also growing as people away from basketball and, um, you know, just really becoming grown men. And uh, that part of it, you know, that maturation is part of why guys become better players too is, you know, um, they're more focused on their business of, of basketball and they're more focused and, and then ready to deal with, you know, things that happen uh, that are challenging. And uh, this group, I think, is in that category. And there's a lot of guys that are, you know, really excited about what we're doing, but they're also there and, and, and they've been through a lot to get there. So I think it's helping in a lot of ways. Coach Freeman was a, is a, can be a real prolific scorer at times. He was just two of, of 11 in your last meeting. How much of that do you attribute to the job Gabe was able to do on? 
A combination. I think we did some good things defensively in the game, and then I thought there were some things that uh, we didn't do quite as well. We didn't guard as well as we did against Louisville. Um, there were some shots that those guys had that they just didn't make, um, you know, and so uh, you know, I thought we did some good things defensively in the first NC State game, but it wasn't, you know, our best defensive game. Um, you know, sometimes you get lucky and guys miss a few shots. I thought that happened to us a couple times. Um, but uh, we'll probably have to defend better to win. Uh, what do you do to keep this team level-headed, knowing the gauntlet is ahead for you guys and to make sure they, you know, just keep that yeah. mentality? I think we've been pretty level-headed for a while now. Um, I mean, I don't know that, you know, I've asked questions like that ever since we won at Ohio State that, you know, well, how does this change things? It, you know, I hope it doesn't change things with our guys. I hope we still enjoy coming to practice and competing and we want to learn and we want to be prepared and get better and, and figure out what it is that's that that we need to improve upon and then um, what it is that we're doing well that's helping us and just enjoying the journey of you know playing good basketball and having some good results um, so I, I don't know that you know there's anything that I can tell them right now that that they haven't heard before or that we haven't talked about through the years but uh, you know at the end of the day hopefully it's just uh, that hunger to want to continue to improve and, and be good late, and that's what we're trying to do. NC State actually out-rebounded you in, in that 16-point win. Um, obviously, you'd always like to win the battle of the boards, but how critical do you think that will be on Thursday? No, it will be. They're a big and strong physical team. They're, they're um, you know, that's one thing they they do, one of the several things that they do very well. And, uh, you know, they really did it with Malika Boo and Faltrell. Um, and so he – didn't play as many minutes as we anticipate he'll play in the next game. And uh, so we, you know, they're a very, their front court, those guys are as big and strong and physical as almost anybody in our league. Um, you know, obviously you, you saw that in the Duke win. They can, and when they play Arizona, I mean, two of the bigger, stronger, more physical teams in the country, they were able to, to match those guys. Um, and uh, certainly that's something that we're going to have to deal with. The NC State loses, loses to you guys and lose to, to Notre Dame by 30 and then turn around and beat Duke. Does this conference this year have the potential to be the wild, wild west? Maybe everything is kind of... Yeah, I mean, I think, there's, I, think that's, I think that happens a lot in college basketball. I think um, just the nature of our sport, quick turnarounds. We don't always play teams, you know, at exactly the right time. You know, I've talked a lot about sometimes it's not who you play, but when you play them. Um, in our sport because it isn't always the same. We don't always have five days to get ready and do our normal Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday routines. You you really have to coach on the go. I mean, this, you know, um, and, you know, when something's going on, when there's an injury or when a, one or two of your guys who play a lot are in a bad place, you know, when you play five or six, seven guys, that's 30% of your team. You know, we're not – one or two football guys, it's not quite as drastic. And so I just think that those are the kind of things that happen uh, more now in basketball. And I also think there's more even talent in basketball than there is in football. Uh, I just think there are teams that are just physically so far superior that, to be honest with you, it's hard for them to win. Um, you almost know who's going to win before the game starts. In basketball, I don't think that's the case. I think the three-point line and I think uh, uh, just the nature of different prep times and travel and all the, the different logistics that go into everything, um, you know, it's hard to have your guys all the time playing at their, their best. And when you don't in this league, everybody's got good players and good coaches, you're, you're not going to win when you don't play well. You mentioned NC State size. Um, a team like Eli has faced quite a few challenges um, in that way so far. I mean, you're pretty happy with the way he's... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think he's much improved. I still think there's ways to go, but, you know, if he's going to be the starting center at Clemson, then he's going to face that pretty much every game. There's going to be somebody that he's playing against that is as big or bigger and talented and, um, you know, gifted, strong. And so that's that's the nature of the beast. Um, but certainly pleased with, you know, what he's been able to do. He obviously had the difficult start against Louisville with the fouls, but regrouped nicely and has done that a couple times this year. Um you know, obviously we're looking for consistency with him. I think we've got he's gotten better, um, but still has room for improvement. 
you're off to your best start since 2008, yeah. and you're not going to rank any, but what can you take from this five in and your team at this point? Completely? You know what? Uh, what I've enjoyed the most is watching, watching them just work and, and uh, watching the smiles on their faces when good things are happening for them. Because there have been some guys on our team that have had to work at this. It hasn't always been that way. You know, we've had some very uh, heartbreaking losses. We've had some uh, challenges. And to see some of the guys on our team that have worked this hard for several years to have that kind of sec success is, uh, you know, that's what I enjoy the most is watching those guys do well and, and uh, you know, have success. So that's been fun.